Hello and welcome to another episode of the Learn Cardano podcast, the podcast where we break down all the ins and outs on Cardano and also keep you up to date with everything that's happening in the Cardano ecosystem. Now, this interview I have coming up is with Asung. He's from the Cardano Crocs project. Originally, it started off as an NFT project, but it evolved immensely because of the community behind it. The community came in and started building all these different games, all these different platforms, and using the Cardano Crocs tokens, the C4 token, in their own projects and doing some crazy things with it. Everything from minting their own merchandise, their own projects, or using C4 token, not ADA, not any other token, not USD, C4, or these other tokens that they have in their ecosystem as well, but purely the C4 token. And I absolutely love that because it brings in so much utility for this random token that someone else minted. And for any of the projects that are wanting to build on Cardano, They don't need to worry about the uh, issuance of a token, the legalities behind it. Someone else has already done that and everyone else is just building on top of that. So that's something very unique with this project and something I really, really like and I'm pretty excited about as well. Now, I've joined the Cardano Crocs community. I've purchased an NFT and um, I've got one of those radioactive Cardano Crocs and it's it's pretty cool. I, I got one with headphones on it. So it's it's kind of like me, you know, it's uh, it resonated with me when I was going through the marketplace. But if you're interested in the project, I'll put all the links in the description. This is an audio only episode. So if you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, thank you so much. This is a very unique piece of content for you guys out there. All right, let's get into this interview. Uh, Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me, Peter. It's a pleasure to be here today. So we've got a lot to talk through here. Like, um, it's, uh, when you guys gave me the brief and, you know, I've spoken to other people about the project as well. Like, uh, um, uh, it, it, it just goes so deep and a lot of people are building on top of it as well. So I don't know where to start. Uh, can, can you give me like a, a bit of a background and history of how this all started? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, <laughs> it's interesting you say that because originally it wasn't like supposed to be like this, but as time went on and we kept adding things onto it, it became this monster. Um, so the easiest way to describe it is right now we're working on something called the Swamplands. Uh, that's thematic to the crocs and like crocs can be found in swamps. But the Swamplands is essentially going to be a web 2.5 app store. So imagine the Google Play Store or the, um, the Apple Store, except it blends the gaming side, the business side, with the crypto side. So for example, DeFi, uh, NFTs, and some elements of traditional finance, the TradFi that you see in the real world today. And this all kind of comes together through the swamp lands, which is what we're trying to achieve. So when you said people are building on top of this, that refers to applications. For example, simple games, um, small businesses. These are all things that can be uh, implemented using the swamp lands. So um, what are we seeing uh, people building on top of this and how are they actually doing that? Like uh, um, from, from what I understood, Cardano Crocs was launched as an NFT project and then you launched a token and then suddenly somehow the community just uh, took off and, and ran with the idea and built, on, built everything on top of it. Like uh, that, that's a bit, I, I, I don't understand. Like how to go from the initial concept to where it is now? Yeah, no, it's a great question because it, it, yeah, I mean, it doesn't make any sense because this is not quote unquote uh, normal, <laughs> but we like to do these, these yeah. crazy things and see where it goes. So um, the original concept of the Crocs was uh, to create a, like an arcade, right? When you were younger or even today, you can go into a arcade or a game store, uh, put in a quarter, you can play a game and have some fun. The idea was to recreate that experience, but on the blockchain. Right, nothing crazy, no AAA games, but just to kind of relive the, the past and um, give, I guess, a entertainment to people. The one of the issues today is with crypto in general. Um, the quote unquote normal people that don't care for crypto and don't care for the Web three experience, they don't have much to do here, like no reason to be here. And we figured, hey, if we create this small arcade, um, we utilize the tokens and the blockchain experience that comes with it we could maybe get some of these people to get interested in this side of everything. And what it started off as the arcade concept, uh, we figured, hey, an arcade is just 
a platform where you can host applications. So why don't we take it a step further and also let businesses host their applications? There's no difference there, right? And when it comes to just the plug and play, like an API. Um, the project started as an NFT project. And the idea here was to break the mold for what, I guess, NFTs, what crypto can do. A lot of protocols today on not just Cardano, but a lot of other ecosystems, they rely on a token. The token is usually generated by an ICO or some sort of farming mechanism on a um, pool. We figured, why don't we try the farming mechanism and the token distribution through NFTs? So right now you know about NFT staking. Uh, so a lot of projects, they basically what it is, is you hold an NFT and you get dripped like a daily or a weekly, whatever the duration is, some amount of tokens for the NFTs held. And we figured why not try this approach, um, recreate the meta in the sense of how tokens are generated. And also at the same time, do what NFT projects do best is to create a great community. Uh, community being a group of like-minded individuals that like these projects, like what they see, like what the art is, whatever the case might be, and really build around that as a whole. To answer your last part, the building on the swamplands. So the interesting part is this idea kind of came about because like most NFT projects, you have holders and you have the team or the founders. But we've had a lot of uh, community members who actually came up to us and asked, hey, Asung, how do I get involved with the Crocs uh, besides just being, hold, being a holder, how do I do more? I don't want to be a moderator. I don't want to be a team member, but I want to use my skills and like the abilities I've acquired throughout my, my life and my career and kind of make an impact in a more meaningful way. And unfortunately, the answer was you can't, <laughs> right? The closest, <laughs> right. The closest uh, thing you can say is um, go to a metaverse, right? Go to Sandbox, go to Decentraland and try to create something there. But at the same time, that's really just really complicated for a simple solution. So we figured, hey, no one else is doing this right now. Why go all the way to Web3? Why create the whole metaverse when you could just stop at Web2.5 like, and bridge that too? Just take what it works today, like the arcade experience, the business experience, and just add a little bit of crypto, add a little bit of Web3, add the NFTs, uh, make this middle ground and see where this takes us. Because we have a lot of people in the community who are looking to create things, to build things, but no platform to do so. And that's kind of how the idea sparked and kind of how it evolved over time. That's crazy that um, you, you basically gave the community a way to join in and uh, start building in that um, web space there, which is really, really cool. It's like enabling people to join and be a part of something, um, which is, uh, um, you know, uh, absolutely amazing. Now, um, with with uh, all, all that um, enabling of the community, uh, what have we seen come in and what are people building at the moment? So starting off as a game and, you know, arcade thing that you guys built, but then what have people been building on top of that and how are they building on top of that? You mentioned uh, a plug and play API. Um, I'd like to dig into that as well. Yeah, sure. So I guess the um, it will be easiest to answer this by, uh, I guess, like describing how Swamplands works. So Swamplands is actually made up of three parts. Um, it's a gamified dashboard that also doubles as a platform for these APIs. So Swamplands is actually, um, they're NFTs, <laughs> believe it or not. We have uh, the Living Lands, which is the first part, which kind of is the, how do you call it? The gamified dashboard experience, right? The Living Lands allows you to stake for our token C4. It allows for people, um, or rather holders of other projects on Cardano that don't have Crocs per se, could also earn C4. Um, it also allows the ability to level these up and kind of interact with the rest of the ecosystem we're building. Um, the second part of it is the recreational lens. So these are more development tools than they are just like for fun, to say the least. And think of these as like the application layer for the swamp lens. Um, it's where your application reside. If you have a game or a small business idea, you can just upload it onto the swamp lands using our APIs and SDKs. So this actually targets uh, new businesses potentially on Web3, but also um, existing businesses and brands on Web2, where if you already have a brand, you already have a website or a business, and you want to take this extra leap of faith to see what Web3 can offer, 
um, you can go ahead and do that right here. Just uh, log in. If you own a recreational land, you'll see the ability to upload your API, and that's more or less it. The last part is the commercial lands. And these are also development tools, but they're for a different purpose. This is more of the payment layer. So by default, everything on Swamplands runs on C4. Uh, going back to the arcade analogy, you've put in a quarter, or let's say you deposit 10 C4 or 1 C4. You play a game, and you could sometimes win prizes depending on the game, and um, call it a day. But we know that not everyone wants to use C4. Um, C4 is the bread and butter here, but some people just either don't care for it or it makes things more complicated. And the commercial lens allows you to use other payment methods. So separate from swamp lands, we actually created an exchange, uh, like a um, token swap. It's called UEX.finance. And I believe it's the first in the world um, to allow you to go from any currency that's, that's offered on the platform directly into Cardano fungible tokens. So for example, C4, or maybe um, I don't know, AADA, now known as um, LendFi, or, or maybe uh, Society from the Society. Like any token that exists on Cardano that has been added to the, the back end on our end with a large enough liquidity pool, um, people can just come over, whether it be from Bitcoin, from Ethereum, from Solana, and hopefully in the future, just uh, fiat on ramp as well. Now, as for what we're building, a lot of people have started uh, small games. So for example, we started off as a uh, this arcade concept and our first flagship game was poker. And the poker was actually determined by the community. We currently have a functioning poker website that uses C4, our token, as the poker chips. Uh, one C4 equals one poker chip on the, on the application. And just piggybacking off that, we do have other games in store. So for example, um, a few of our members, two of them started our own project called C4 Slots. It's like a slot machine um, that can be utilized on the swamp lands using C4. They actually have a working MVP as a Discord uh, bot that does the exact same thing. And once swamp lands is live, this can be further integrated into the um, swamp lands ecosystem. We have another person or a community member who's creating a game, also separate Discord. Um, it's called uh, PFP Pit Brawl. It's it's like a, the closest way to describe it is like a rock paper scissors um, game where you have avatars, you have stats, you have characters, and you have abilities to kind of fight and win these battles. Uh, another game that was uh, one of the first to join is called Swamp Tanks. Uh, you just uh, click and shoot. It's one of those games where it's a nice, easy shooter game. And um, that was all fully integrated with Swamp Plans just recently. So you can actually go into Swamp Plans, you can load up your wallet there if you choose to and, and play the game. And you don't need to load up the wallet, but if you want to buy items from the shop, for example, you'll need to have C4 for that. Um, those are just three games that are coming online. Uh, I actually have a few games myself that I've been working with some developers for, and uh, they're coming online as well. So I think by September is the target. We're expecting something like 20 applications to be live on the Swamp Plans, and with a large marketing push coming afterwards, specifically targeting uh, gamers, gaming companies, as well as uh, business owners and business, I guess, new, de new business developers to um, try this out and uh, push this um, narrative towards them. Mate, hey, so there, there was a lot to unpack there. <laughs> there's, there's a, that's a massive amount of um, uh, stuff that you guys are doing and uh, what the community is building, um, especially around the, the gaming space. And uh, it was Decimalist from Pit Brawl that actually uh, introduced me to the Kadana Crocs um, uh, ecosystem and what you guys were building because he was like so hyped up and excited about what he was building with um, Pit Brawl and uh, all that ecosystem there and uh, what he could do with C4 and um, have an ability to have a token but not launch it themselves. So um, they don't need to uh, um, involve themselves in the legal aspects of uh, launching a token because they're just utilizing something that's already out there. Um, now, I, I, there's, there's some things I really want to pick out here. So first, let's go back to the exchange that you guys have built, the UEX Finance, UEX.Finance Exchange. Uh, having a look over that, it's quite an interesting uh, platform that you guys built. It allows people to exchange from other chains uh, to Cardano native uh, tokens and vice versa. Can you talk a little bit about that, how that's built and uh, what was the goal behind that? 
So how it was built, or rather how it operates, is you send uh, crypto or token A, and you receive uh, crypto or token B in return. There is no wallet connect function. There is no, um, I guess, uh, physical connection or, or digital connection, only for security reasons. Um, we know that bridges specifically are large targets of hacking, and we want to limit this as much as possible by making sure it's not possible on, on, on this uh, exchange. But that's how it works. You send A and you get back B. Um, it's market rate. And uh, we have a lot of, I think, a lot of uh, market makers in the background um, working with us to get the best, I guess, deals possible for, for the uh, users. And this is made really for the quote unquote onboarding or the accessibility side of things, right? Um, right now, if you're not in Cardano, if you're not plugged in, if you're not updated with the, the newest and best things, um, you don't really know where to go. There's no one-stop shop to, to uh, get a token. So to give you an example, let's say I'm on Ethereum. Um, you're interested in uh, like Snack coin, right? That was a, a big thing and is a big thing right now, but you don't know how to get to Snack. Uh, the logical thing to do is, well, step one is to convert your Ethereum to ADA using a centralized exchange or a DEX if you can find one. And step two is to take that ADA, find the appropriate DEX with SNEC listed with the large enough liquidity pool, and then do that conversion manually. Um, by doing this, you need to download a card on a wallet. You need to find the SEX or the DEX to do this. You have to do the transaction yourself and wait. And then if anything goes wrong, there's really nowhere to go to or, or ask or something, right? So all we're doing here is just taking that experience and making it easy. That's that's really the bottom line. You want to get um, user experience. You want to get the the ability to come into the ecosystem with much ease in order to really onboard people. So this actually came from just people we've talked to, right? We've went to non-Cardano events. We've gone to conferences and, and other types of conventions where whether it be gaming or whether it be business, um, a lot of these people, they're hesitant to enter because of the lack of like, or the ease of access to, to put simply. And we figured this exchange can be one of the first things to make that happen. Um, in the future, if someone takes what we have and makes it better, then by all means, please do, because this will all just help the ecosystem grow. And uh, that's kind of where it is. Right now, this is actually a working beta. We have more, many more plans for this, but it does what it needs to do. And it does successfully onboard people into the ecosystem that we have here on Cardano. I've, I've had a little bit of a play around with it and literally you can pick whatever um, token that you can um, start with. Uh, let's say uh, ETH or a USD, um, a Bitcoin, Solana, whatever it is, you could choose um, to exchange over to Cardano and you basically have all the popular tokens listed on there, which is absolutely amazing. So it's, uh, it's definitely a really good onboarding process for anyone that's suddenly just heard of a really cool token and want some access to it all. So it's a really, really simple and really um, easy way of um, uh, going through the process as well. And then all you have to do is add in your wallet address or where you want it to go. And uh, I'm assuming you send to a particular address and away it goes. So it's a really nice user experience, I think, that you guys have put together there. Yeah, thank you. And, and I mean, it wasn't easy to do. Rather, a few months ago or maybe in a, a year ago, this all this way of an idea is, but... This came together because of other protocols as well, like the ability to get these tokens, we connect to the MinSwap APIs or ViFi's APIs, and um, it makes it all happen because these are tools available to us today that weren't here just a few months ago or even a year ago. And the ecosystem is developing rapidly, and we all need to get ready for that, that mass influx of users um, that's coming in the coming uh, months. Now, you guys have also developed some other little tools. I was just checking uh, through um, the, my notes here. You've got like a NFT sweeping tools. You've got trading bots. Um, and and these these are pretty unique tools in the Cardano ecosystem um, to be able to tap into and use. Can we talk a little bit about those? Again, this platform that we have is like a, almost like an a, amalgam. It's like everything that kind of comes together um, into one melting pot. Right. And the thing that we've noticed, at least on Cardano, is there's a lot of people that want Cardano to be great. A lot of people that want this to be the go to blockchain in the future. And, and we believe that as well. But before you can 
quote unquote surpass people, like to put it lightly, um, you need to match what they have. When you look at the development on other chains, on other projects, on other ecosystems, there's a lot more things there that Cardano doesn't have today. So the idea here was to bring some of those things over, uh, at least to start leveling the playing field and really start developing things in a way that um, hasn't been done before, right? We have this one big um, protocol or rather the application called Swamplands that offers all these things. The NFT image generator and the sweeping tool were one of the first two things that we've had um, in mind. Um, the image generator was really to help people uh, that want to make NFTs. Because NF I mean, coming from an NFT background, the uh, NFT creation, finding artists and putting it all together, um, even that has a lot of different services to go to. We figured, hey, if somebody starts in Swamp Plans, at least they can start here, look at what needs to be done, what needs to be, um, what we can offer, and then go look for, for other options as well, if, if they don't like it or they just want to shop around. But at least they have a starting point, which is here. It'll be a little bit funny where a project that started as an NFT project doesn't offer any NFT services, right? That just kind of <laughs> yeah. makes sense. Um, the second thing is a sweeping tool. So we actually thought about this because it didn't exist on Cardano, at least on the popular uh, marketplaces. And what ended up happening was um, the biggest marketplace right now is a JPEG store. They recently released their sweeping tool. Um, I think it's been a few weeks. And so we figured, hey, we have the same functionality. This, this application works. Why not just take this and make it into a quote unquote trading bot, right? Where it doesn't trade tokens per se, but it takes NFTs that are usually mispriced or underpriced and just uh, sweeps it up and either relists it or tries to um, do something with it, for example, for future prizes or future giveaways and such. That's crazy. It's, just, it's like um, I, yeah, I've heard of these uh, tools. I haven't expanded out to different ecosystems to have a look at um, these different trading um, bots and uh, um, you know NFT tools that are out there. But of course, like uh, if there's a market, someone's going to try and automate that and uh, capitalize on it. So it's it's really cool that you guys are bringing that stuff to the Cardano ecosystem so that people can actually start playing around with it and uh, uh, and utilizing so those things. And and of course, like other people in those ecosystems in Ethereum or Solana or Polygon, whatever, that are used to those tools, they come over to Cardano expecting the same kind of things. And they will notice that it doesn't exist. And they think, oh, yeah, Cardano's ghost chain. So it's really good that you guys are, you know, aware of what's out there, aware of what's being built and creating it in the Cardano ecosystem for us. Um, otherwise, there's that like, huge gap uh, that doesn't um, uh, exist in the ecosystem all these things that we're quote unquote creating, it's really just to get this ecosystem up to speed. And if somebody comes out and they want to make a better product, then by all means, please do it. If it helps the larger Cardano ecosystem, it's just only a benefit for all of us. And right now it's not there. So something, some of these things we've been developing, it's, it's come out and great. Other things are still kind of um, just just myths or, or, or talk, but not actually tangible objects or, or businesses. And uh, um, hopefully that changes in the future. I mean, we've been here since October of 2021. And since then, I mean, back then there was nothing here. There was like a few um, minting services, uh, one or two marketplaces that no longer are around now. And a lot has happened since then in a positive way. So hopefully by um, starting these um, tools or, or creating these tools or the infrastructure, we can kickstart something much greater in the future. And uh, this also ties into our ecosystem where we do want to have a um, C4 marketplace, to put simply, and these tools can be used in-house. We also have a lending app uh, being developed, um, which kind of mirrors some of the trad five models in the real world that uh, breaks away from DeFi, um, which is what everyone's used to. So we have a few things like that in the works that are gonna be released later this year. And a lot of these tools that are being um, created are either going to be used for the existing infrastructure in Cardano, but also for the existing, rather the new and upcoming products that we have um, coming forward. Uh, how are people using the C4 token within their ecosystems and your ecosystems? Because I, I know people are using it to, in all sorts of different ways, like from you know playing in the arcade, but um, are people extending it and taking it further than what uh, you guys have initially uh, conceived? We actually, the, the, the first use cases was for a baby Crocs breeding game 
which is our dirt collection and um, some of the, the land sales. So going back to the collections, we have three croc collections, the um, Corona Crocs Club, which is the OG flagship collection, the 3D Radioactive Crocs Club, and then the third being the Baby Crocs Club, which is actually derived from a, a breeding game that took place last summer. Um, you need the 10,000 C4 and two and a half ADA just to cover transaction fees to receive a Baby Croc. And that was like a Tamagotchi like style game where you kind of have to take care of this egg. And then after a period of eight weeks, you ended up with a baby croc, which was the third collection um, in our, I guess, uh, project. And the lands as well. We mentioned lands before, living lands, rec lands, and commercial lands. These were all done through a C4 pre-sale. You only paid in C4. If you've been staking with us from the start or something in between, you were able to buy these for, for fairly cheap. If not, you could have uh, just bought C4 from the secondary markets and then decided to use that C4 to ultimately purchase these lands and use them today for what we have for swamp lands. But aside from the sales and the mints and the NFTs, um, some of these games, some of these applications also use C4. So for example, uh, I mentioned before the, the poker application. Um, one C4 is one poker chip. And so you can play poker with your friends. You can um, play to make some money and then you can kind of uh, see where that goes and either hopefully make money or make C4 and then cash out for a higher amount. Uh, we also have C4 slots, which is going to be, um, well, it does. The, the Discord app right now, it does use C4. You can place a bet, and you can spin the wheel and kind of see where it lands and hopefully make some C4 there. And they have some pretty cool competitions where, like, the largest winner of a, over a certain period or or maybe, like, the largest spender, um, they get these, like, pri I wouldn't say prizes, but they get these these uh, rewards or perks um, just to gamify it a little bit. You also have a PFP, PFP pit brawl, I mentioned earlier, where they basically um, have in-game items or upgrades that can be purchased using C4. And we have a few people that are actually working in the real world. They have businesses. For example, uh, one of our members, he makes a lot of jewelry, um, rings, necklaces, um, things like that. Um, he does plan to open up a shop in the swamp lands as well, just to take C4 or maybe USDC for our, our stable coin. And um, another one being, uh, we have a few community members that own Crocs, but also own other projects. And they're linking to bridge their businesses over into the swamp lands alongside other um, applications that might come up in the future. So this is just kind of a few examples of use cases. We do want C4 to be like the currency. This is a means of exchange um, for the swamp lands. And little by little, as more applications are launching, these will come together um, a bit more with every single application. All right. This this is an amazing amount of um, adoption for the token. So many projects are just picking it up. I love the fact that you can um, uh, people are just taking C4 um, as the uh, sales token for whatever um, they're uh, building, where, where NFT project game or, or whatever it is, um, especially with that um, um, uh, real life business as well. That's um, absolutely amazing. Now, um, you you also just casually mentioned stablecoin in there as well, and I can't let you just uh, pass um, over that or glaze over that so uh, lightly. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the stablecoin that you just mentioned? Yeah, sure. I was hoping you missed that, but I guess you you caught that really well. <laughs> so, a stablecoin <laughs> that we've been working on it's called USDC four. So it's a play on words between USDC, the uh, Circle stablecoin, as well as C4. Um, going back to the whole narrative of adoption and onboarding, um, one of the things that Cardano was lacking, um, today there's a few, was a legitimate stablecoin. So there's a lot of projects out there now that have created stablecoins, whether it be algorithmic or, or fiat-backed, but they're all very new. And when we talk to people that are off-chain, especially on Ethereum or Solana and other established chains, they just don't have the confidence to use something so new. So what USDC4 aims to do is it tries to bridge USDC with Cardano. Um, we've looked into this. We've looked into Tether. We looked into USDC. We couldn't find a solid reason why they're not on Cardano. I mean, we thought maybe there was a falling out or... Maybe it just never approached us, and, and I mean, but we just couldn't find anything. So we figured USDC4, um, you send us, for example, Bitcoin or Ethereum or even USDC on another chain through the exchange, 
and you get back the same amount of USDC for minus the fees, which is like usually the transaction and the gas fees. So let's just say, assuming the fees are zero, you have a thousand USDC on Ethereum. Um, you send it to um, through the exchange and you get back USDC for a thousand USDC for one to one. Now you can use this USDC for on swamp lands or possibly on a Cardano, other Cardano applications. Like if you want to uh, farm on a DEX, right? That maybe utilizes like USDC for with IUSD, like a stable coin pair. And then after some time you're done, you can go back, send back your USDC for and redeem it for USDC on another exchange or not an exchange but another blockchain so that was the idea behind it we just kind of created this two-step mechanism to bring usdc um, onto cardano and this was done in part to to uh, incentivize the adoption right the onboarding the all those magical words we like to use onto cardano because the thing about adoption and onboarding that people don't understand is it comes down to psychological and social behavior, right? A lot of people don't want to leave their comfort zone. They sometimes like to see uh, cool things or they, they hear something and they see something and I think they're cool. But when it really comes down to changing your day-to-day -day habits to use this, it needs to be something that they're familiar with. And right now, at least on Cardano, and I guess just crypto in general, um, there's nothing to give that sense of familiarity to the quote unquote average person, right? But with USDC4, this is just the first step towards um, attracting the off-chain folk, the cross-chain folk, right? Um, people that already use USDC, that use Tether, that are familiar with these tokens that have been around, around forever, they can now bring them onto Cardano in this um, two-step process, like a little bit backwards way, but at least they can use this with some confidence that, that this will be always backed by a USDC one-to-one. Uh, -one. And that's kind of the mechanism behind our stablecoin. So first off, um, when you're, this is, it sounds like a, essentially a bridge. So you, you're moving the assets over. So you need to have that um, USDC locked up to um, have that reserve currency for the USDC for on the Cardano ecosystem. So um, how does that bit work? And how do you guys guarantee that there is that reserve backing of the USDC that you've locked away uh, to maintain the peg, essentially? And um, there's also the other aspect that I understand. Uh, USDC isn't on Cardano because you can't lock addresses up on the Cardano ecosystem. So uh, Circle haven't um, come in and uh, integrated in because you can't um, lock up and uh, block certain addresses from exiting with USDC. So it's part of those uh, anti-money laundering things. So that might be the aspect around that. And so um, have you looked into that as well? But um, yeah, we'll, we'll go back and um, talk about the re reserved um, uh, currency and locking that away on the bridge first. The idea behind this um, exchange we have, it's, it's so the walls are not connected. Um, so tactically speaking, the only way to get USDC for right now is through the exchange, which um, I mean, technical purposes, it's not really a bridge. It is a bridge, but it's not. I mean, <laughs> just the way it works. Um, yeah, as okay. for how it, um, I, yeah, as for the second part, the, the I guess the security, um, the easy, easiest way to describe it is the USDC, um, let's just say, that's taken in um, and converted to USDC4 is put on a, like a, just for simplicity, like a hardware wallet or some sort of hard wallet, um, cold wallet. That's, that's not accessible through any normal means. Um, and the way this works is when things are requested, um, it's sent out. And when things are um, sent in, it's just sent into the same address. And this is, in our opinion, the best way to do this. Um, it does come down to a lot of trust. But at the same time, it's the most um, straightforward way to make this possible. Now, the next part that you mentioned was regarding the, um, the reserves, right? So oftentimes in like uh, banks, for example, um, what they do is they take the reserves, they lend it out. For example, on government bonds, they make like what right now, four or 5% and uh, they pocket a difference. Um, we're not trying to do any of that here. We're going to just, this is not supposed to make us any profit. This is supposed to just be an onboarding tool to get people into the ecosystem. And that's kind of what we're doing here or whatever we're saying we're going to do. It's really up to you to believe us. And um, 
the idea is that as this gets more popular, as the exchange grows, right, as USCC gains more traction, um, there will be other opportunities, for example, with other DEXs using these things for uh, arbitrage or maybe in Swamplands itself using USDC4, where we'll actually generate the profits and the revenue um, from this token existing. So I don't know if that answers all your questions, but uh, <laughs> that's just uh, the most straightforward way and the honest way we can, we can say it. Is there any way that um, users can see the balance or is any of it stored on chain? Um, like can oracles like tap into that reserve source and, and, and validate it in any way? I mean, we can give you the address like afterwards to see where it actually goes. And you can confirm for yourself, like USDC4 is a Corona token. So um, the mechanism behind it is a minting and burning. So when one USDC4 is introduced, um, it's minted and backed by one USDC and vice versa. When one USDC4 is removed from the system uh, or redeemed, um, one token is burned and then therefore the one USDC is unlocked. So in theory, um, if you want to check everything we're doing, you can check the circulating supply of USDC4 um, compared to the total supply within like uh, the hardware wallet, for, for example, that should have the same amount um, one to one. I think that's part of the, the trust factor um, for people to uh, understand how it all works. So it's, it, I, th- I think it's a good idea to have that available. The, the only other aspect is like, um, uh, I know it's on a hardware wallet, so it's a little bit more restrictive. Is there any chance of like a rogue um, employee or rogue team member ever running away with um, assets on that particular wallet where the USDC is locked up on? So right now it's actually in a uh, security deposit box, <laughs> but in theory, that's, I mean, if you want to talk like technicals, that is a possibility. Like we've, we've had that all the time. We have founders of exchanges disappearing and, and then all these things going, going like, like crazy things that happen in the world. So, I mean, to answer truthfully, the answer is there is a non-zero chance that that could happen. Now, the, the question is why? I mean, <laughs> again, yeah, you can take, if this goes into such a large amount that, yeah, maybe it is tempting to, to steal it, right? And right now, only the founder or the co-founder um, knows the location and, and the seed phrase. So that is one risk um, element that we have here. But ideally, we want to find technologies in the future that can prevent this. Um, for example, on Corona, you have multi-sig wallets, which can be an option. But for the purpose of just what we're describing here, multi-sig seems very um inconvenient to put simply when it comes to each transaction being approved um, each uh, USDC4 and USDC being released um, on and off so in the, yeah in the future we would like to have another solution to this but in the intermediary it's just really down to trust and um, the quote unquote hope that uh, this doesn't happen but again the idea behind this token wasn't really to, we didn't want to make a stable coin. <laughs> it's just that the other options given to us, um, it wasn't really much better for us. And ideally, maybe in the future, Circle or Tether or one of the more established stable coins out there does enter Cardano. And we can just get rid of this whole mechanism by using their tokens directly. Okay. We'll see where the future takes us. And uh, to, to reiterate that point, like uh, people trust exchanges, like, um, you know, Binance that um, uh, they won't take away all their assets as well. So it's it's uh, um, lots of levels of trust um, when we're um, involving ourselves in the crypto space at the moment. And, you know, I'm just wary sometimes because like um, the, the latest update from multi-chain, a bridge um, that was operating out of China. Um, the CEO was arrested, and uh, you know now MultiChain is a defunct bridge because all the uh, wallet keys and um, server access and and whatnot were under control of the CEO, and he's gone missing now, or apparently arrested by the um, uh, officials, and now no one can access his servers. So it's it's um that, that that's that's what worries me sometimes when um uh, there's limited access and. Uh, um, it's not decentralized in all those uh, um, various parts. So it's uh, always a worry and something in the back of my mind when um, uh, some of these things come up. No, no, absolutely. And that also is one of the, the I guess, the fundamentals of, of crypto today. Um, until there's further regulations, until those better technologies out there, um, trust is always going to be an issue because it's, it's a little bit ironic, right? Where the whole system is supposed to be built on trust. 
um, slowly but surely we're developing technologies and protocols that um, mitigate that that liability. But in the end, that's kind of the the basis that this was built on. And um, again, that's I agree with your your sentiment, and it does worry me that sometimes, not necessarily for for the stablecoin per se, but just in general, there have been so many instances um, in the past where something like that happens. Um, someone disappears, or or a lot of money is just gone. And I'm sure that won't be the last time it happens in the future. But again, this is just a temporary means to a solution, and hopefully, other people, um, rather other solutions, will come up in the future that make that makes this obsolete. Yeah, it's such a fast evolving space. Uh, brand new tech, brand new ideas, and everything comes out. And you know, just looking at the Cardano Crocs ecosystem, starting off as an NFT project and suddenly evolve into all these different things with the swamp lands, living lands, and the recreational lands. It's like absolutely crazy, and uh, commercial lands, I should say. So it's crazy, like uh, you know, watching your ecosystem grow. Now, uh, w- one of the last things that um, uh, I know you guys do is uh, the Croc Pot show um can you talk a little bit about that um i haven't uh, been able to tune into one of those shows yet but can you talk about what that is and what you guys are trying to do with that yeah absolutely and you're in luck because it hasn't started yet officially <laughs> we've been oh, right. uh, marketing <laughs> okay. it we've been um pushing it but the just to take it back one step um swamplands had three goals and it has three goals now, goal number one is to unify um, the cardano nft scene and that was made possible with the living lens, where non-croc holders can also stake for C4, and they can use the C4 for for whatever people are building in the ecosystem. Um, goal number two is to get people on board from cross chain, so people that are already in crypto, people that are already knowledgeable about about blockchain and understand and like the ecosystem, we want to bring them into um, Swamp Lands and also Cardano, because the idea here is to really show them what we can do, right? And that was made in part possible with the Swamplands APIs, but also the exchange itself. So that's an evolving process that is still being worked on. And as we move forward, we do have plans also to open a pool on Ethereum and other chains, like for example, Uniswap, where one C4 is going to equal one C4 no matter what chain you're on. On the Swamplands itself, it's going to be um, whatever right you can come from wherever you want and if you have c4 you can interact with the ecosystem and enjoy it as much as anybody else the third goal is to actually get people from off chain on board so the swamp plant itself is very largely web 2 um there's elements of web 3 for example the wallets it has an internal dashboard wallet the whole thing with the stable coin the c4 as well as these games that operate off of, of c4 but the Experience is largely Web2, and that was made, in, in, I guess you can call it on purpose, uh, really to attract the people who already know, for example, business or, or gaming and development that want to take it a step further and, and venture into Web3. They don't want to go head first and immerse themselves in all the technologies, but just the understanding that this can be done on blockchain, it can be done on Web3, and get them exposed to, like, it could be the early days of the App Store, for example. Um, going back to Crockpot, Crockpot is actually a, ga- uh, a game show. If you know um, the popular show Shark Tank, it's a very similar type of, um, I guess, set, uh, format or setting. And the idea here is to really find ideas that are not limited to just cryptocurrency and blockchain, but good ideas in the real world, whether it be, like, for example, a brick and mortar store or even just um, Web2 in nature and bring them into Swamplands and also the Cardano ecosystem. So, for example, someone can have a great idea and you can integrate uh, C4 or ADA or some sort of cryptocurrency to that. Um, maybe they didn't think about how or, or, or what, but this gives them a platform um, to do so and also gives us the ability to bring them in, um, not just for our project, but just for the basically show that this can be done on a larger scale. Um, CropPod itself is going to be a show where like contestants, contestants come up with good ideas. They can ask for a variety of things, for example, uh, funding, uh, marketing, some sort of a partnership or something along those lines that um, maybe they just need that extra push to get into the real world. And um, this is right now much more, I guess, meaningful where the macroeconomics are really just horrible. Um, interest rates are high. Um, a lot of people, especially new ideas that could be great ideas, 
are being shafted or just not getting the support they need because of the way that the world is right now. And this at least gives them the opportunity. Uh, maybe their MVP is already done. Maybe this product already works. Maybe um, these people just need a little extra push to, to get it off to the races. And when everything settles in like a few months, things will just get much better for them and it'll be a mutually beneficial relationship. So that's the idea behind Crockpot, the game show. And this is scheduled to start airing um, in September. So we've actually started opening up applications. You can find that on the Swamplands website. On the top right corner, I think there's like a button that says uh, apply for, for Crockpot. But we've already started getting applications. We're, we're shifting or sifting through them. A lot of them are Web3 in nature, which is completely fine. But the idea here is to, again, sense of onboarding and um, adoption, um, bring this to the face of people that might not know about blockchain, that are familiar with Web2, familiar with traditional business, and onboard them into the ecosystem we're building here. Majorly cool. I'm just uh, lo looking for that uh, particular link <laughs> so I can... Um... Uh, join in on that particular uh, crock pot. So I'm, I'm pretty interested in what you guys bu building there. Uh, I think it's a really good, really, really good onboarding um, process for a lot of people too. So I, I absolutely love it. Now, um, where can people get started with the Kadana Crop Club ecosystem? It's it's There's so much here. Uh, wh where should people go to get started and find out a little bit more about what you guys are doing? Yeah, so the easiest answer to that is going to be join our Discord. Um, I know not everyone likes Discord, but over there you can not only just hear from me and everything that I have to talk about here, but also get a feeling from the community, right? You want to talk to the people about the project, right? Anyone can tell them the best things about how the how everything that's coming and the newest and greatest things. But when it comes to something like this, it is a community effort, and we do value that a lot. The Discord will show you firsthand um, who's around, what we're building, and what we're all about. Um, secondly, if you want to just reach out to us, you can do that on like another medium, for example, is Twitter. Um, otherwise, just traditional email works too. Because again, right now, while we are largely Web3, we do want to break out into the, the quote unquote real world in a more meaningful way to kind of show that these things can be done and this technology is here to stay. All right, I'll make sure I put all the links to that and everything in the show notes so people can uh, find it as easily as possible. But um, Asang, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast and taking me through the entire Kadana Crocs ecosystem. There is so much there to take in and uh, I absolutely love what you guys are building. And I've also just purchased my radioactive croc while we're talking. <laughs> so I'm part of the ecosystem now. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, Peter. And actually, one note about the radioactive croc. So if you have a croc and you log into the dashboard using your wallet, it'll automatically stake for you. It'll start staking every day. It'll generate rewards. There's no stake button. There's no crazy things. Again, the idea for onboarding and adoption, make it as easy as possible for the user. And that's kind of a principles we've been building behind the entire time. So I'm glad you're a part of the ecosystem. Thanks for having me here. And looking forward to giving you updates in the future how this thing evolves. Yeah, super excited to see where this all goes. And yeah, we will catch up after you've launched all the other aspects and see how we go. All right, awesome. Thank you, son. Thanks again, Peter. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debating. I O H K, Emerco, we're not affiliated. Not Cardano Foundation. We just gotta say it. A show that you can learn and it's for your entertainment. Yeah, you gotta check it. Don't want to be missing that. You were tuned in to the Learn Cardano podcast. Yeah, giving insight. Ain't another show like this when it come to crypto. Invest at your own risk. Might not be for everyone, but who it is for. We keep giving you some info and plenty more. Hey, yeah, the Learn Cardano podcast. Hey, yeah, the Learn Cardano podcast. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Keep it locked right here. Let's go.